This is the story of Gizmo and the Gremlins. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. Rand Pelser had looked all over Chinatown for an unusual Christmas gift for his son, Billy. So when he had entered a musty backstreet shop and seen the exotic furry mogwai creature, he knew he had found it. Billy, of course, loved the cute little animal and named it Gizmo. Rand told Billy three important rules he had learned in Chinatown about caring for the mogwai. No bright lights, especially sunlight, no water, and no food after midnight. Otherwise, bad things would happen. A few days before Christmas, Billy's young friend Pete came over to visit. Hey, Billy, I heard you got a new pet. Can I see it? Billy gently placed the tiny mogwai on his drawing desk. Pete's eyes widened. Wow, where'd you get it? My dad got him for me. His name's Gizmo. Pete watched in fascination as the mogwai picked up a sketching pencil. <laughs> Look, Billy, to him, the pencil's as big as a post. Can I pet him? Asked Pete. But as he reached out, he accidentally knocked over a glass full of paintbrushes. <gasps> Oops. Gizmo suddenly let out a screech as some drops of water splashed on him. Billy watched fearfully as Gizmo arched in pain. Oh, no, he's not supposed to get wet. Gizmo, are you all right? As Billy stared helplessly, something strange happened to the tiny mogwai. The spots where the five water drops had hit Gizmo slowly began to grow. Then, as if by magic, the spots became five tiny balls of fur and popped off Gizmo's back. Billy's mouth fell open as the furry balls grew and grew. Each one then uncurled to reveal a brand new mogwai. Pete watched the five new creatures stand up and stretch their new arms and legs. Wow, this is better than a comic book. That must be how they multiply, Pete. No wonder you're not supposed to get them wet. Billy examined Gizmo. Look, he's fine. The spots have completely disappeared. It's as if they were never there. The new mogwai grinned at each other, but Gizmo shied away from them all. Billy scratched his head. Hmm, look at that. Gizmo acts like they're different from him, but they all look about the same, same size and everything, all except for this little guy with a stripe of white hair on his head. I guess we ought to call you Stripe, huh? What do you think of that? The five mogwai giggled, but Gizmo sat quietly by himself. Billy took the new mogwai downstairs and set them on the coffee table while he looked for his father. Dad, we, uh, got Gizmo wet. I think you'd better look at what happened. Rand walked into the living room to find the new mogwai humming, giggling, and shoving each other happily. Stripe was playing a portable video game, and another was eating grapes out of a bowl. Rand shook his head. Oh, brother. I think it's time we had these guys checked out. In the meantime, you better keep them up in your room. Don't let them near the shower or the sink, or we'll be up to our armpits and singing fuzzballs. Without anyone seeing him, one of the mogwai spit a grape seed at Barney, the family dog. Barney jumped up and barked at the mischievous creature. Billy spun around and grabbed the dog. Hey, easy, Barney. Rand glanced at the innocent-looking mogwai. Now, Barney's just jealous of your new pets. It might be a good idea if he sleeps downstairs for a while. Gizmo stood in the doorway and frowned. He knew. It wasn't Barney's fault. The next morning, Billy took a mogwai to his old friend, Mr. Hanson, the high school science teacher. Billy told him about the three important rules and how the new mogwai had been created. Mr. Hanson examined the tiny creature carefully. This is amazing, Billy. 
I've never seen anything like it. I'm afraid all I can tell you is that water has to be above freezing for them to multiply. They also seem to get upset if they're separated from each other. But frankly, I've no idea what would happen if you fed them after midnight. 